there's a poverty of ambition if you don't think you can make a difference in the world. I'm going to say that again. There's a poverty of ambition if you don't think you can make a difference in the world. Back in February 2012, I got a call on my cell phone, and the caller ID said, blocked. I was with two of my colleagues at the time, and I had that funny feeling, so I answered it. Hello? Hello, is this Ryan Harb? Yeah, who's this? This is Ronnie Cho calling from the White House. Ronnie, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I looked at my two colleagues and whispered, it's the White House. <laughs> so a few months before this, I had applied to a contest hosted by the White House. It was called Campus Champions of Change, and it was looking for the top college and university projects in the country that were changing the world for the better. So Ronnie went on to tell me that our project was chosen in the top 15 out of over 1,400 from across the country and we now had one week for the public voting period. If our project received the most votes, our entire team would get to go down to the White House. We'd get to speak about our project to a national audience, and we may even get to meet the president. We just had one week to get those votes. So you wanna know what happened? Well, I'll tell you, but first I wanna tell you about our project and why we chose it. So as many of you probably know, the Earth's temperature is rising, and rapidly. This is one of the biggest issues facing humanity today, is climate change. It threatens our quality of life and our very existence on the planet. And no one knows exactly what the future will look like. But here's some things that we do know. We know that the 10 hottest years on record have all occurred in the last 12 years. We know that 2014 was the hottest year on record. And NASA recently released data showing that temperature and rainfall patterns will likely to continue to change dramatically throughout the century. And what this means is we should expect huge disruptions. Disruptions to our coastlines, disruptions to our cities, and disruptions to our global food system. And this one kind of concerns me. We have a very unstable global food system. And what we need is to reshape and redefine our food system so that it's more sustainable and more resilient, that it can withstand some of the extreme weather patterns that are becoming the new norm. What we need is a food system that's more localized and more community-oriented. And that's what our project was all about, creating a replicable, local, and sustainable project that you can also do right here in Utica. Back in the early 1970s, two Australians Bill Mollison and David Holmgren coined the term permaculture. That word is actually a portmanteau. It's a combination of two other words, permanent and agriculture. Agriculture, as you know, is a science and practice of farming. And permanent, in this case, means being able to live sustainably on the planet, generation after generation indefinitely. And if we want this, if we want to continue living here and having a good quality of life, for everyone, then we need to create a sustainable and just food system first and foremost. One that works for all people, not just those of us who have privilege. Permaculture is a vision and a design system for creating a truly sustainable culture, or a permanent culture. And there's three guiding ethics that can help with that. And the first one is called Earth Care, Care of the Earth. When creating a sustainable food system and a sustainable culture, we need to be thinking about our relationship with nature and working with nature, not against it. One of the underlying beliefs in permaculture is that we should do our best to mimic nature. And I personally think it's when we've separated ourselves or put ourselves above nature when we've gotten into the biggest messes that we're in. So mimicking nature. And in order to do that, we need people working together and that's the second ethic of permaculture, is people care. Permaculture has to involve people. And some of the best projects are helping to solve social issues as well as environmental issues. Things like food access, as well as many of the injustices that the Black Lives Matter movement is bringing to national attention. Permaculture is not just about food, it is about helping people in the world right now, as well as thinking ahead to future generations. Food, I think, is just a great place to start because we're all so connected to it. 
The third ethic is called fair share, and it means share of surplus. And again, it comes back to helping people in the world right now. So now I want to talk about a permaculture project, permaculture in action. So here's a project located nearby here that can be replicated here in Utica. In 2010, at the University of Massachusetts, we began implementing one of the first public university permaculture gardens in the nation, directly on the campus. The vision was to have students, faculty, and staff growing food right outside of the dining commons where everyone could see it, where the food gets harvested and then goes back in the dining commons and gets served to students each day. I was hired to manage this project and to oversee a passionate team of student leaders. We called ourselves the UMass Permaculture Committee. That's us. And our mission was to transform a quarter acre grass lawn on the campus into a garden using permaculture as the guiding framework. And we used a process to do this called sheet mulching. And here's where you might want to start taking notes, or you can just watch this talk again later. So whenever you're starting a garden, there's a few things you have to consider. The first is getting approval from your city or town. The next is getting a dig safe so that you know what pipes and utilities are underground. And third, very importantly, is getting a soil test done, making sure that your soil is healthy enough in order to grow food. So once you do these three things, you can actually start sheet mulching. And here's the fun part. So the first step you're going to do is mow your lawn or existing vegetation as low as possible. Then you need to aerate your soil with digging forks to reduce compaction. Now, depending on the size of your site, this may take a lot of people power. But that's exactly why we did it, to create more volunteer opportunities. So sheet mulching is also good for the soil. It's a lot less disruptive on the soil structure than rototilling. So that's the earth care and people care piece. After you're done aerating the soil, you can begin layering. And the first layer that you put right on top of the grass lawn is a layer of fresh, finished compost, about three inches, plus any other soil amendments as recommended by your soil test. And this is called your soil remediation layer. Right on top of that, you put a layer of cardboard. So cardboard or newspaper acts as your weed barrier layer. And that prevents the grass and the existing vegetation from reestablishing for at least a few months. You want to make sure there's no holes in the cardboard and that you overlap it by a good six inches. On top of the cardboard layer, you put a mulch layer. And we use three inches of fresh wood chips because the campus had plenty of them. But you can also use grass clippings or straw or crushed up leaves. And then you just let it rest. So we sheet mulched during the fall. And then during the winter, we couldn't be outside anyway. And in the spring, we planted into it. And when you plant into sheet mulch, you actually plant through the mulch, through the cardboard, and into that soil remediation layer. Now, while the soil is resting over winter, it's a great time to decide what you're going to plant. So that's what we did next. We hosted a community design workshop where we had over 100 people show up, our stakeholders, students, faculty, staff, and local community members, to help us brainstorm what are we going to actually put in this garden. So at the end of this four-hour workshop, breaking everyone into small groups, we had over 40 different designs that were produced that day. And then it was our job to take those 40 designs, look for patterns, and put them into one comprehensive design that looked like this. So now we knew what we were going to plant, and that would be even more volunteer opportunities. So here is what it looked like after we were done sheet mulching. Just a sea of wood chips. And here's what it looked like in the winter. We had a lot of snow that year. Here's what it looked like in the spring when we began implementing it. And here's what it looked like after. Pretty impressive, right? So even more. <laughs> Thank you. Even more impressive than what it looked like, I think is the community that it created on campus. So we had our team, the UMass Permaculture Committee, but we had engaged over 1,500 volunteers to help in the sheet mulch, the design, and the planting phases. 
and it created quite a buzz. So we were planting fruit trees, berry bushes, nut bushes, vegetables, uh, flowers, herbs, you name it. People were really excited about this. It created a buzz both on, on campus and off campus. And this is when we started getting national media attention. We were getting articles written up in the Boston Globe and the New York Times, the Huffington Post, and you remember that phone call I told you about. So right now we're in the running for this White House contest and we have one week to get as many votes as possible. So you've all been pretty patient. Here's what happened. At the end of that week, we got nearly 60,000 votes, more than any other project, and we're named the top university project in the country that's changing the world for the better. A few. <laughs> Thank you. A few weeks later, we were at the White House, and I was sitting on a panel next to President Obama, which you'll see in a sec. And he said a few words to our group that day that really resonated with me. And they still do to this day. So I'm gonna share that with you now. The president said, if you ever lose that sense that you can make a difference, that you can bring about positive change that isn't just about you, but is about something larger than yourself, if you ever lose that sense, then I think you've shrunk your own horizons. There's a poverty of ambition if you don't think you can make a difference in the world. This particular project involved an entire campus effort, but permaculture can also be done on an even smaller scale, on an even more local level. It's something that you can do at your home right here in Utica. So here's a home example of permaculture. This is a grass lawn that's about 5,000 square feet, and it's in Amherst, Massachusetts, so very similar climate. You can plant pretty much the same things here. And this was actually a grass lawn that I had to mow maybe 15 or 20 times a year, and I didn't really like doing that. <laughs> so I decided that I'm gonna transform this grass lawn at my home into a garden using permaculture as a guiding framework. And I had two goals in mind. One is I wanted to meet my neighbors. I wanted to do something in my local community that would strengthen it, and I wanted to actually get to know people who lived near me. And I thought that a, a beautiful front yard garden would be a great way to do that. And second, I wanted to try out this whole mimicking nature thing, creating sustainable ecosystems. So I did the sheet mulching process. I called up a bunch of my friends and said, hey, I'm transforming my grass lawn into a garden. You want to come help me? So they came. And we got a lot done, but we didn't finish. So then I called them the next weekend and was like, hey, I'm doing that thing again. And they didn't come that time. <laughs> so I had to finish it myself, but no hard feelings. But it was that sheet mulching process. So here's what I'm going to quiz you all. So I hope you were taking notes before. So after getting approval from your city or town, and taking a soil test, as well as getting a dig safe. I mowed the grass as low as possible. And then what's the thing you do before putting down the layers? What do you do next? I heard it, aerate the soil. So that's what we're doing in this picture, is aerating the soil. After that, you know the next one. What do you put down? Compost, right, it's three inches of finished compost. And on top of the compost, shout it out, what's next? Cardboard, you guys got it. And next, after the cardboard, the mulch layer. And then let it rest. So we did this in the fall. And then here's what it looked like that first winter. A little bit of snow. And here's what it looked like in the spring. So that's some white clover that we put down to help build soil. And then here's some of the food that we grew in that very first year. Less than one year from a grass lawn into a garden. So this particular process, transforming a grass lawn into a permaculture garden, is hugely powerful for me on two levels. One is just the fact that we can put plants in the ground, and with just a little bit of care, they'll grow and turn into these sustainable ecosystems. That's just so cool. It just blows my mind that we can help facilitate that. 
And two, at an even deeper level for me, is the personal transformation that I experience while doing this. So just like a garden comes alive after winter, I came alive during this process. My entire outlook on the world changed. I went from thinking that I'm just a human having a detrimental impact while I'm here, and I call that my environmentalism guilt, to realizing that I can actually have a beneficial impact while I'm here. And so can you. So you, we, can literally transform our world and help solve some of the biggest issues that humanity faces and turn them into solutions. That's what we're capable of. You, we, have the power to literally make everything around us better every single day. And I've found permaculture to be an invaluable tool set for me in how to live my life with integrity and with authenticity and with purpose. So this is how I live my life. This is my truth. And it's the gardens that are actually just a reflection of me and how I want to be in the world, a resilient, diverse, healthy, and thriving individual. Now, I don't know if this is your truth. Only you know that. But if anything that I said here today resonated with you, if you felt even a little bit of excitement during this presentation, and you haven't tried this before, then I encourage you to just go out and give it a shot. Go sheet mulch and plant something other than just vegetables. Maybe plant a fruit tree. You can plant an Asian pear. They can grow here in Utica. Or plant some raspberries. They're easy to grow, also grow here in Utica. And I think you'll be amazed and empowered at how this sheet mulching process can help get your garden established. And it may even help you in your own personal transformation and on your own life journey. If there's one thing from this talk that I hope you walk away with, it's this. Always remember that you can make positive change happen in this world every single day. That's what permaculture showed me, and that's what I believe. It's you, it's me, we are the true power of permaculture. Thank you. Good job.